this movie, some of the quotes that stuck out to me were that attitude reflect leadership, Captain. We will be perfect in every aspect of the game. And then the one I sent out to you yesterday, an email said this, it said, sometimes life is hard for no reason at all. Remember, The Titans is a, it's a film about overcoming challenges and achieving unity through high school football. Now, we've seen this in other movies. If you watched Miracle, Miracle on Ice, about the Olympics, the 84 Olympic hockey team, it was very similar. They were just a different team that was put together with so many differences. But if you've watched this movie, or if you've lived in this world, you understand that the differences that we have with people, they have the potential to sideline us, to stall us, or to stop us. According to research, you don't really need research. You'll probably believe me if I tell you there's no research on it. Most of you in this room have some type of prejudice, some type of bias in your soul, in your heart. There's something that you don't like about some people that you may hold in, and it could be very vast, but a significant portion of our population has some type of prejudice or bias towards a certain group of people. So we have to look at it and we have to say, what do we do with that? Do we just accept it as something that, you know what, that's just the way I was raised. That's who I am. They're going to have to deal with it. These things sound familiar. They do kind of, don't they? So we can accept it, we can ignore it, or we actually have to deal with it. Now, when we watched this movie, we saw that they had to deal with it to become the football team that they worked so hard to be and to win. I don't think many of us would disagree that they wouldn't have gone as far as they did if they hadn't gotten along and, and looked past their differences. But sometimes those differences, they just stay in the front of our minds. Now, I can't have this conversation with you without talking about our nation because we would all agree that our nation is pretty divided right now. That's sad. It's probably more polarized than it's been in a very long time. And as soon as I say polarized, you're thinking politically. And yeah, it's definitely politically polarized, but it's polarized in so many different ways. We have less middle ground, we have less common ground that we can agree on. So instead of actually opening up discussions or talking, what do we do? We shrink back and we build walls. But if we build bridges instead of walls, I believe that people will see and understand the love of God. If we build bridges instead of walls, people will see and understand the love of God. In life, we face challenges that can divide us. I understand that. You're probably going to face some challenges tomorrow that have the potential to divide you. But if we look at this with hope and faith and the power of God, then I believe things can be different. Because all too often, we try to, we try to get through things on our own. But if you're a believer, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And guess what? The Holy Spirit doesn't hold prejudice. The Holy Spirit doesn't hold prejudice. But if the church can overcome prejudice, embrace diversity, and work together we will be more impactful for the kingdom of God. And we will be a better representation of Jesus Christ. And that's what I want my life to look like. Now, in our lives, we encounter prejudice or division, but it is our responsibility to what do we get to do with that? Now, the hope is, is that we work towards understanding and reconciliation. 
just as Coach Boone did, by acting justly, loving mercy, putting up with people's quirks, we can break down some of those barriers that divide us. Now, I need some of you to stop because some of you just heard what I didn't say. You heard that I said to accept sin. I didn't say to accept sin. I didn't tell you that you need to vote a certain way, and I won't tell you that. But I do believe that we can break down barriers that divide us. I'm saying that in the community and in churches, that we need to reach out and build relationships. But we need to, to reach out with trust and communication. And doing that, we can have a church and a group of people that actually reflects the love of God. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't have prejudice. Differences, arguments, and judgments, they're not new. If you look in Scripture, it's all over in Scripture. We're going to spend a few minutes in Galatians. We're not just talking about a movie this morning. But in Galatians chapter 3, I believe that chapter starts with, Oh, Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who, who has tricked you? We're going to jump down to verse 26 in that chapter, and it reads like this. For you are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. Now the reason he says baptism there, you've been united with Christ, is basically he does a shortcut. He uses shorthand. He's saying that if you've been converted... If you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, then you have absorbed the qualities of Christ. You have been filled with the Holy Spirit and you've absorbed those qualities. One thing that I don't do is I do not dip any cookies, donuts, or anything in my coffee or milk. I think that's disgusting. But some of you do this. And I'm okay with that. I'm learning to not have bias towards you. You want to ruin that coffee? Go ahead. But when you take that donut and you dip it in the coffee, other than everything that happens wrong to the coffee, what happens to the donut? It's soggy. Throw it out. No. No. It absorbs the flavor. It absorbs the flavor. And that's what he's saying in Galatians here. You should absorb Jesus when you believe in Jesus, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You should absorb Jesus. And when you absorb Jesus, you act different than the world and you relate to people the way that Jesus would relate to people. And the way Jesus related to people is he loved them regardless of where they were and what they said to him. We go on, it says, there's no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. You see, Paul is explaining that we need to be, and the church needed to be careful because of the seduction of the secondary. And what that is, is it is things that will pull our attention away from Jesus Christ. Because as believers, we need to be sold out to Jesus. But have you noticed that it's easy to pick up other things that kind of look like Jesus and they kind of feel like Jesus? And we pick those up and we make a big deal out of them, but they're not Jesus. But the seduction of the secondary gives us a little more control because Jesus opens it up pretty easy and he says, you need to love God and you need to love people. But so often we can, we can take this step. But the seduction of the secondary, it blocks unity is what it does. And it creeps in. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. You are all different but you're all one in Christ Jesus. You need to relate to each other with love. Now, the secondary 
can be so many different commitments. It can be a commitment to a leader. It can be customs of our faith. It can be sacred cows. If you don't know what that is, it's actually a religious term. Or improper value that we place on social, racial, cultural differences as compared to Christ. We can do that. Sometimes education is our, our seduction. Our financial status can be a seduction. Political beefs, beliefs can be a seduction. And all of those things can stand between Christians just like race did with the Titan team. But when we major on minors, and that happens a lot, I feel, we end up separated from people who do not look, act, or speak like we do. It can happen. Many of you know we've been praying for Pastor Josh. Nice job with worship, by the way. Thank you. The fact that you can jump, turn, and sing <laughs> hurts my soul a little bit. Because I can really only do one of those, and I can't do them together ever. But we've been praying for Pastor Josh that he would convert to a, like a Michigan, some type of Michigan state or U of M and not be a Buckeye. <laughs> and we've been working on this. But he's very loyal. I was going to actually call him and say, you know what, why don't you wear like a Buckeye shirt because I'm going to use this as an example. I'm like, yeah, I mean, really, that's either going to be a Bengals or a Buckeye shirt or like, what, two Sundays out of the month? And I was going to wear a U of M. And I was going to talk about how, how that's a seduction of the secondary. If we didn't get along because of that. Because we're both kids of God. And that's more important to us than any, correct? <laughs> you're, you're more hardcore than I am. Than anything else. But you can see how, how we can... You can build these, these things in our heads and, and we get seduced by them. Now, that's an easy example, but, but I could just as easy have said Republican or Democrat. I could have. Or race or ethnic backgrounds. But if we focus on those things, instead of embracing the love and the unity that we have potentially in Jesus Christ, we're missing it. Because the only way to overcome this is to make sure that Christ is first and foremost in our lives. Amen. That's it, guys. And then we need to take, we need to set the, the seduction of the secondary to the side. Because it has little ultimate value. He's going to be wearing that Buckeye thing in heaven. I'm going to be wearing U of M, but nobody's going to care. I don't even think that's true. Because I'll be, in my mind, the same age as you in heaven, by the way. <laughs> but we can get so sidetracked and we can focus on those minors and we're missing the majors. Because at the end of the day, what matters is our relationships with people and how we share the love of God with them. How many of you have actually been to Gettysburg before? Have you, that, if you're there, it's just overwhelming. The battle that went on and the people that lost their lives there. If we go back to Galatians, the reason Paul's writing that is because people didn't understand this one point. And that point was that Jesus is enough. That Jesus is enough. Because they had brought some other stuff into, into Christianity at its birth, and they said, well, you still have to do this, and if you're that way, you can't do that. If you look like this, or if this is your heritage, you, you can't do that. You say, no. You say, in male or female, Jew or Gentile, slave or free, we're all together in Christ Jesus. But we see that in that last clip that the team had to make a decision. And I think that at one point in our lives, we all have to make decisions. We either accept where we're at, we ignore it, or we, we deal with it. 
What if we embrace this proverb that says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. I know sometimes it's, it's, it's different to talk about things that we don't understand. But what if we do that? I had this great conversation with someone this week, and, and we were just talking about everything. I mean, you name it, stuff that I never talk about from here, but we were talking about it. And I said, hey, can you just, can you unpack that for me? Because I just want to hear, like, your thoughts on it. Because I think that I'm a big enough boy that I'm not going to be offended at everything that people say. And then I can hear an opinion, and I can say, oh, and I can ask a question. Because at the end of the day, I do want to be sharper. And I want to take a risk with someone and grow a relationship. Instead of building a wall, I want to build a bridge. So the question is, what does this look like in 2024? It looks like this. Work to see people as God sees them. Make a decision to stop thinking thoughts that reflect judgments or biases based on someone's appearances, political beliefs, or behaviors. And I know that's difficult sometimes. Because the first thing when you start to do that, your brain starts to do, but they, but they. Okay, deal with that. But what if we actually let go of those things and let God and the Holy Spirit work on both of you? Because I believe God is that big that you don't have to fight every battle. And then ask questions and be like Coach Boone. Remember what he had them do? We didn't have this in the clip, but he had players that were not alike sit together and ask questions about each other and actually listen. And it was okay. I found that most of the time if I ask a question and I get an answer that I don't like, it's usually a me thing and not a them thing. So I might have to deal with that. And I know this is a heavy message for a Sunday at the movies. I know that. But I don't want you just to come in here and waste your time. I want you to remember this, that most people are battling the same things that you are. I read this this week, that they are fighting for air, that they have wounds and they have scars. Everyone is wrestling with some old story or some brutal reality that they're in the middle of. Everyone is either one spark away from a dumpster fire or they're in the middle of it. That's just the way it is. And then remember this, that everyone needs Jesus. Jesus. 